Love of money is the root of evil. Because you see, a psychological attitude to money is a major obstacle to a proper development of technology, enabling it to do what it is supposed to do, that is, to save labor and to produce goods, services, and so on adequately. One of the reasons that our technology is impeded and prevented from feeding the world properly is the failure of one of our networks. It's an information network and it's called money. When the public suspects that the money that is being issued, the dollar bills being issued by the government, are only paper and stand only for paper, they start putting up prices. So you get an inflationary situation where the more paper money there is, the higher and higher and higher the prices go, which is uh, a very stupid psychological maneuver. When a banker buys gold, with what does he pay for it? The answer is a mystery called credit. Credit is bookkeeping. The amount of gold in the world did not provide an adequate channel for the circulation of goods and services. All great industrial nations went heavily into debt. They created a thing called the national debt, which year by year gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the horror and consternation of old-fashioned Republicans who pay their bills. But the reason for the increase of the national debt is extremely obvious. It is that in an ex with an expanding gross national product, there need to be more and more money, that is to say tokens of exchange, in order to circulate the amount of goods produced, which is ever increasing. I'm not an economist, and I can refer you to the work of those who really are, but any fool can see certain extremely fundamental principles about this whole situation. What happens then when you introduce technology into production? You produce enormous quantities of goods by technological methods. But at the same time, you put people out of work. You can say, oh, but it always creates more jobs. There will always be more jobs. Yes, but they will be, lots of them will be futile jobs. They will be jobs making every kind of frippery. And one will also at the same time have to beguile the public into feeling that they need and want these completely unnecessary things that aren't even beautiful. But if you do a, jo if you do a job with the sole purpose of making money, you are absurd. If money becomes the goal, and it does when you work that way, you begin increasingly to confuse it with happiness. But the basic principle of the whole thing has been completely overlooked. That the purpose of the machine is to make drudgery unnecessary. And if we don't allow it to achieve its purpose, we live in a constant state of self-frustration. And therefore, obviously, uh, the public has to be provided with the means of purchasing what the machines produce. The government or the people have to be responsible for issuing to themselves sufficient credit to circulate the goods they are producing and have to balance the measuring standard of money with the gross national product. That means that taxation is obsolete, completely obsolete. It ought to go the other way, that every individual should be assured of a minimum income. Now you see that absolutely horrifies most people. Say all these wastrels, these people who uh, are out of a job because they're really lazy, give them the money? Yeah, because otherwise the machines can't work. This was the situation of the Great Depression, when here we were still, in a material sense, a very rich country, with plenty of fields and farms and mines and factories, everything going. But suddenly, because of a psychological hang-up, because of a mysterious mumbo-jumbo about uh, the, the economy, about the banking, we were all miserable and poor, starving in the midst of plenty, just because of a psychological hang-up. And that hang-up is that money is real and that people ought to suffer in order to get it. But the whole point of the machine is to relieve you of that suffering, which is an ingenuity. You see, we are um, psychologically back in the 17th century and technically in the 20th.